Mr. Peanut Butter and Johnny Two Cellos? What is this, a crossover video? Of all the main characters in BoJack Horseman, few are as fun as Mr. Peanut Butter. I mean, he's a dog. Who doesn't love dogs? If you don't love dogs, please unsubscribe. Mr. Peanut Butter is a really interesting character with a pretty substantial history showcased in BoJack Horseman. So today, let's take a deep dive into the complete timeline of Mr. Peanut Butter. And if you like these kinds of videos, please make sure to check out the other five timelines I've done so far. Beatrice, Herb, Diane, Sarah Lynn, and Todd. Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd sure did pitch a lot of crazy ideas through PB Living, but you know what would've helped them out a ton? Wondershare Demo Creator. Demo Creator is an incredible screen recording slash editing tool. Check it out, you can screen record anything off of your desktop computer. Let's take a look at some of my old videos where I used to show my face. Hey, there's that ugly mug. Then when it's done recording, it immediately imports straight into the editing software where there are tons of effects at your disposal. Let's throw this retro TV over my face first. There are even great caption tools. Here's a lower third that describes me perfectly. And of course, we can add these 100% accurate captions on there. Yep, that's definitely what I said in the original video. I guess the only problem now is my face, so let's fix that up real quick with these facial recognition effects. Plus, the exporting process is quick and easy, with tons of different options. You can even upload it straight to your YouTube channel if you want. Voila! I've fixed my old video. Right now, Wondershare is running a Thanksgiving discount. You can get 20% off an annual plan, which is already super affordable. Plus, you can check out the software for free using the link in the description of this video, and if you comment hashtag Thanksgiving with Demo Creator, we'll pick the three Three best comments to gift a free three month license for full use of the software. Check out Demo Creator today. Mr. Peanut Butter was born on August 20th, 1969, on the Labrador Peninsula in Canada. Born five minutes earlier was his brother, Captain Peanut Butter. Captain Peanut Butter was relatively protective of Mr. When their parents died, Captain chose to tell Mr. that they were both sent to a farm in the country where they could run around carefree. I haven't been able to visit, but everyone in my family goes to that farm eventually. Oh, dude, your mom's dead. Mr. Peanut Butter attended Northwestern University for college. We have no confirmed dates of his attendance, but I think we can assume he went from 1987 to 1991. Mr. Peanut Butter had a penchant for walking into rooms without looking where he was going, which led to a series of events that would change his life forever. One time, he accidentally walked into a cockpit of a plane and ended up co-piloting the very plane that brought him to California. But more importantly, in 1992, Mr. Peanut Butter wandered into a live set where they were filming Untitled Horsin' Around Knockoff, starring Vincent D'Onofrio. It was clear that Vincent's performance in this sitcom was not working, and fortunately, as they realized this, Mr. Peanut Butter wandered onto set and wowed the execs and audience. He was given the role on the spot, and Untitled Horsin' Around Knockoff became Mr. Peanut Butter. House. Mr. Peanut Butter's house was obviously very similar in premise to Horsin' Around, as Mr. Peanut Butter adopted three orphans and had to raise them. The kids included the older brother Zachary and two twins, Zoe and Zelda. Around this time, Mr. Peanut Butter married his first wife, Katrina. In 1993, Mr. Peanut Butter invited Bojack to his Halloween party, but Bojack lied about having his own party. Mr. Peanut Butter decides to invite his entire party over to Bojack's instead. He and Katrina attend together. Katrina asked Mr. Peanut Butter not to leave her alone at Bojack's party, to which Mr. Peanut Butter agreed, but did not follow through. He continually left her alone at the party, swiftly apologizing before leaving her once again due to another distraction. Very dog-like. At one point, Katrina is forced to talk politics with Ben Stein and Tim Allen, and eventually blows up at Mr. Peanut Butter before leaving the party to be alone. In 1994, Mr. Peanut Butter was nominated for an Animal's Choice Award for Best Male Animal in a Comedy, Drama, or Variety Show, competing against Bojack Horseman and Hank Hippopopoulos. Hank wins the award, and the three end up talking at the after party at Chateau Marmoset. Hank tells a joke that would leave a huge imprint on Mr. Peanut Butter. What is this? <gasps> a crossover episode? <laughs> <laughs> That is the funniest thing I have ever heard! Mr. Peanut Butter tells Hank how big of an inspiration he was to PB and takes a selfie with him. He then goes off to see Katrina, whose hands have disappeared down a busboy's pants. After this, Mr. Peanut Butter and Katrina get divorced. In 2003, Mr. Peanut Butter attended a poker match at Wilmer Valderrama's house with a variety of other Hollywood folks, including Princess Carolyn, who notices that he had a tell in his poker bluffs. Sometime around or before 2004, Mr. Peanut Butter meets his second wife, actress Jessica Biel. In 2004, the two of them go to Bojack's now annual Halloween party together. Jessica wants to dress up as the characters from The Notebook, but PB dresses up as a notebook. Beale also asks Peanut Butter not to let her see any mummies because she auditioned for a role in The Mummy with Brendan Fraser and didn't get the part which traumatized her. Without a costume, Bojack improvises a mummy costume using toilet paper, which traumatizes Jessica Beale further. 
PB was incapable of helping because his notebook costume was too large to fit through the door. In 2007, Mr. Peanut Butter is still married to Jessica Beale, who criticized Mr. Peanut Butter's tendencies to take any job that is offered to him, including ads for seahorse milk that would air under the ocean. She also began to rave about her new friend, Justin Timberlake. While the two of them are at Starbucks, Mr. Peanut Butter meets Diane Nguyen for the first time, who was a barista at said Starbucks. Two months later, Mr. Peanut Butter hosted a fundraising event for the John Edwards campaign for president. While there, Mr. Peanut Butter and Jessica get into a huge fight backstage, which ends with Beale asking for a divorce so that she can date Justin Timberlake. Mr. Peanut Butter also connects with Diane at this very event, at which she was part of the catering crew. He recognizes her from Starbucks, and the two hit it off immediately. Add me on MySpace, okay? Sure. All right. Guess I'll see you around. They began to date shortly after this, and by 2009, Diane had moved in with Mr. Peanut Butter. On Halloween 2009, Mr. Peanut Butter attended Bojack's annual Halloween party with Diane. Diane accidentally embarrassed herself in front of Bojack, who had, unbeknownst to her, just learned his father had died. Diane gets upset at Mr. Peanut Butter for encouraging her to talk to him and further embarrasses herself. I hate big parties! What? Diane tells Mr. Peanut Butter being as fun as his ex-wives is too much pressure and leaves. She later apologizes to PB for ruining another Halloween, but PB denies that she did this and says he's glad to know she hates parties now. Now I know you don't like parties, so we will never have that argument again. In 2014, Mr. Peanut Butter runs into Bojack at the restaurant Elefante. What is this? A crossover episode? You know, that gets funnier every time. Shortly after this, Mr. Peanut Butter's girlfriend Diane is hired to write Bojack's biography, which means PB starts spending a lot more time around Bojack. Around this time, Mr. Peanut Butter also starts filming a reality show about himself called Peanut Butter and Jelly, which doesn't seem to last very long, though it does facilitate a public apology from Bojack to Neil McBeal, the Navy SEAL, for eating his muffins. Soon after this, Mr. Peanut Butter is followed around by a journalist named Wayne who is writing an article on Mr. Peanut Butter for BuzzFeed. Wayne also happens to be Diane's ex-boyfriend, and it turns out the article was just a ruse because Wayne wanted to get back together with Diane. After Diane takes a trip to New York and Boston with Bojack, Mr. Peanut Butter begins to express some jealousy towards their friendship and inside jokes. He asks Bojack if he has anything to worry about, which he denies, but this doesn't stop the pair of them from participating in a series of silly escalating challenges trying to outperform each other. After PB goes home, Bojack drunkenly steals the D from the Hollywood sign as a gesture for Diane, but regrets it. Mr. Peanut Butter figures out it was Bojack and says he will help him return the D. Instead, Mr. Peanut Butter brings the D home and steals Bojack's gesture, offering the D to Diane as a symbol of their love. Mr. Peanut Butter later apologizes to Diane for the overblown and grand gesture and expresses how much he understands and loves her, and he proposes on the spot. Erica, did you she said yes? Come on in here! All right. After going with Bojack to Malibu to see his old friend Herb, Bojack tries to kiss Diane, which turns her off immensely. At some point after this, she tells Mr. Peanut Butter about the encounter. Not long after this, Mr. Peanut Butter gets his license suspended for chasing the mailman in his car. He ends up hiring Todd Chavez as his personal driver. Due to her stress level of planning the wedding, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter decide to move the wedding up to within the month and have a smaller celebration. While at the bank, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane are unknowingly part of a staged bank robbery by Bojack and Margot Martindale in an attempt to steal Diane's engagement ring and break up the couple. It actually just pushes the pair of them closer together and they decide to get married within a week. Before the wedding, Mr. Peanut Butter confides in Todd that he is having doubts about his marriage with Diane, which Todd opts not to tell Bojack. Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter get married at Elefante, which is now owned by Bojack thanks to the escalating competitions from earlier that year. That night, Mr. Peanut Butter makes Todd the executive vice president of West Coast Operations at his new company, PB Live-In. A couple of months after this, Quentin Tarantulino begins shooting a film called Mr. Peanut Butter's Hollywood Heist, recounting the false events of PB's theft of the Hollywood D. Mr. Peanut Butter is being played by Bojack Horseman, and Diane is played by Naomi Watts. Mr. Peanut Butter has some issues with the film, but not many. I find it really troubling that my movie self is wearing a crew neck t-shirt. <laughs> I only wear v-necks. In the end, the movie is redeveloped into a bi-monthly curated gift basket of snacks. After some drama surrounding the book, Diane's book about Bojack, One Trick Pony, is released and even wins Bojack a Golden Globe in 2015. Diane is also now presented with some big new career opportunities, including potentially going overseas to follow and write about millionaire philanthropist Sebastian St. Clair. Mr. Peanut Butter does not like the idea of Diane traveling overseas, and he convinces her not to go. PB and Todd also start brainstorming business ideas for PB Livin' and come up with a pitch for Halloween in January, a Halloween store that is only open in January. 
They pitched to Bojack and some other potential investors. After opening the store, they had the floors taken out and never had them replaced, which caused a series of injuries, including to Andrew Garfield. PB and Todd also pitched Smoothies, a smoothie that is also a mood, and Full Waffle, a waffle falafel. Around a month later, Mr. Peanut Butter sees himself in the mirror and tries to punch himself for wearing his clothes. He has to get stitches on his arm and is forced to wear a cone on his head. Not long after this, Todd opens a huge amusement park called Disneyland, and because it opened while he was working at PB Live-In, Mr. Peanut Butter claims partial ownership over the venture. He has his lawyers look it over, which triggers all kinds of legal issues with the real Disneyland. Todd very luckily discovers that Walt Disney trademarked the wrong name for Disneyland, and he's allowed to keep running it, but he bans Mr. Peanut Butter in the process for almost bringing everything down. Mr. Peanut Butter eventually returns to Disneyland to apologize to Todd, and while there, a huge fire breaks out, trapping Todd on the roller coaster. Mr. Peanut Butter climbs to the top and saves Todd's life. Not long after this, Mr. Peanut Butter attends Herb Kazaz's funeral to schmooze. While there, he encourages Princess Carolyn to continue telling her stories of friendship with Herb, which are all lies. On March 19th, 2015, Mr. Peanut Butter takes Diane out for an entire day of activities for her birthday, including Women on the Wall, an exploration of gender and text and media, Barbara Kruger and Jenny Holzer in conversation with Helen Molesworth. Diane was excited to crawl in bed after a long day, but PB had other plans. <laughs> During the party, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter have an enormous fight over whether Tony Curtis is dead or alive, which abruptly ends the party. The two of them have a huge argument and discussion about their relationship and dynamics. Diane expresses major frustrations over his giant grand gestures and seeming inability to recognize that she does not like them. Mr. Peanut Butter does express recognition that he actually listens to her sometimes when they get to the room he themed after Starbucks for the party. I don't love Starbucks. You don't love Starbucks. You love the independent coffee place. It's just that the Starbucks is more convenient. Yeah. Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane lay out on their jello-filled pool, and Diane gets angry at him again for subtly guilt-tripping her about planning to go to Cordovia with Sebastian St. Clair. They talk this out, and PB expresses his fears about her leaving, and they come to a better understanding of each other's needs. Not long after this, PB Livin completely runs out of money, and PB's accountant tells him he needs to get a job. He goes to see his agent and discovers that he has died of autoerotic asphyxiation. PB begins wandering around LA looking for work and ends up finding a job at Lady Foot Locker. While working this job, Prince Princess Carolyn recognizes PB's natural hosting capabilities and becomes his new agent, getting him a job on the new game show that she's producing with J.D. Salinger. J.D. Salinger presents Hollywood Stars and Celebrities, What Do They Know? Do They Know Things? Let's Find Out. Mr. Peanut Butter's new series, Hollywood Stars and Celebrities, What Do They Know? Do They Know Things? Let's Find Out, ran back to back with Hank Hippopopoulos' show, Hey, I Think You Can Dance. While on a press tour promoting the paperback edition of One Trick Pony, Diane drudges up old allegations against Hank Hippopopoulos, which jeopardizes PB's show. Mr. Peanut Butter asks Diane not to push the issue any further, however, she still does. After a huge negative press campaign against her and countless death threats being sent to their house, Mr. Peanut Butter asks Diane to go to Cordovia and work with Sebastian St. Clair, reversing his previous stance. Diane asks if that's really what he wants. Why does it suddenly matter what I want? Soon, Hollywood stars and celebrities, what do they know, do they know things, let's find out, premieres on MBN, and the first two contestants are Bojack Horseman and Daniel Radcliffe. The game show seems to be rigged in Radcliffe's favor, and Bojack takes exception to how PB is treating him on the show. He insults Mr. Peanut Butter and mocks him because his wife left the country to get away from him, to which Mr. Peanut Butter also takes exception. He confronts Bojack about kissing Diane on live television. Bojack apologizes and tells PB his genuine insecurities. I'm jealous. Mr. Peanut Butter doesn't want to forgive Bojack, but network exec Wanda tells him he has to for the show. He forgives Bojack, and to make up, they make out on live television, for some reason. Sometime after this, Bojack asks Mr. Peanut Butter to help him and director Kelsey Jannings break into the Nixon Library to secretly film a scene for Secretariat. Mr. Peanut Butter plays Checkers, Nixon's dog. While Diane is in Cordovia, she and Mr. Peanut Butter speak on the phone regularly, but eventually Diane calls PB to tell him she doesn't think they can talk anymore. It's too hard for her. Mr. Peanut Butter reluctantly accepts this. A few months after this, Mr. Peanut Butter sees a woman at Alafonte who looks just like Diane. He calls her and asks her to come home because he can't find the batteries to the remote. Diane says she'll be home that night. Diane eventually reveals to Mr. Peanut Butter that she left Cordovia quickly after arriving and had been crashing at Bojack's for months. Because of this, the pair of them participate in couples counseling with a therapist. Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane regularly check in about where they are to reform that trust. Mr. Peanut Butter and Princess Carolyn have a conference call with J.D. Salinger, who wants to end Hollywood stars and celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. He told the story he set out to tell, so because he's now out of a job, Mr. Peanut Butter starts up PB Livin' again and kidnaps his former accountant Oxnard to help restart the business. 
business. While brainstorming new ideas, Oxnard sarcastically imagines that Todd might have an idea involving spaghetti strainers, which leads PB to buying countless spaghetti strainers and putting them all around his house. Not long after this, Todd and Mr. Peanut Butter get sprayed by Mr. Peanut Butter's skunk neighbor and call Princess Carolyn to help. When PC arrives, Mr. Peanut Butter expresses his concern over how Diane might react to the skunking. But I swear to God, we are like five big fights away from a divorce, and I do not want this to be one of them. PC has PB and Todd take a bath in tomato juice, and Mr. Peanut Butter shakes it out of his fur, getting tomato juice all over the house. While they smell better, the house and their clothes do not, so the pair of them burn the clothes outside, setting the entire yard on fire. Princess Carolyn suggests that they pretend it was on purpose to install drought-resistant landscaping. Mr. Peanut Butter calls Diane early the next morning after she never arrived home from a day with Bojack, and he's very upset with her. This is big fight number one. You can't keep doing this to me. I'm sorry. Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane continue couples therapy where PB excels at expressing his feelings for Diane while Diane struggles. That night, Diane goes to a party at Alexi Brosefino's house while PB stays home and watches Bones. <laughs> Bones! Later that night, Diane arrives home tripping on a drug called Gush, and she expresses her love for Mr. Peanut Butter. She then tries to pick him up to carry him to bed, but falls and breaks her wrist. While at the hospital, the doctor reveals to her that she is pregnant. While leaving the hospital, both Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter express that they think they should get an abortion, which she does. Not long after this, Todd and his friend Emily pitch Mr. Peanut Butter on a company idea, a rideshare app that utilizes women drivers for women passengers so that they can feel safer. PB loves the idea, and they set up the company and start working out of Bojack's house. For New Year's 2015, moving into 2016, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane visit the Labrador Peninsula, where he grew up to visit his brother, Captain Peanut Butter. While there, Todd calls PB to suggest that they start including male customers at Cabra Cadabra, and PB agrees. Todd later calls again to reveal that the addition of male customers was a success, except that now their women drivers don't feel safe, so Mr. Peanut Butter suggests that they find new women drivers. They end up hiring the dancers from Whale World. Also while there, Diane expresses some concern over some of the things that Captain Peanut Butter said to her, and Mr. Peanut Butter takes exception to this and gets in an argument with Diane. Just because you have a shitty relationship with your family doesn't mean every other family has to have drama too. This is big fight number two. After this, Mr. Peanut Butter goes to talk to Captain. Captain reveals that he has a twisted spleen and needs surgery. The two have a heart to heart and howl at the moon together. <laughs> In 2016, Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd purchase a new office space for Cabra Cadabra after its major success. Not long after this, PB is offered a gig announcing the Oscar nominees after the previous host, Jimmy Fallon, was hit by a bus. Just before Mr. Peanut Butter announces the Oscar nominations, he gets a call from Captain about his surgery. Unfortunately, Mr. Peanut Butter drops his phone, which he accidentally kicks continuously and has to chase across town and even through the sewers. He eventually gets it back, and Captain reveals that his surgery was a complete success. Unfortunately, Mr. Peanut Butter also lost the envelope that the nominees were in while chasing down the phone. Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd then decide the nominees themselves, including Bojack being nominated for Best Actor for Secretariat. Unfortunately, Bojack wasn't actually nominated. Mr. Peanut Butter goes to Bojack's celebratory house party to tell him, where he finds that Bojack has crashed his Tesla into his own pool. Mr. Peanut Butter saves Bojack from drowning, gives him mouth to mouth, and then informs him that he wasn't actually nominated for an Oscar. A few weeks after this, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane return home to find Bojack and Sarah Lynn had broken into their house on a drunk and drug-fueled bender. The two leave, shoving over Diane and breaking her wrist again in the process. A few weeks after this, a huge accident off the coast sends a huge amount of cooked spaghetti barreling towards Pacific Ocean City. In order to save the day, a countless number of spaghetti strainers are needed. Unfortunately, the only person with this number of spaghetti strainers, Mr. Peanut Butter, has gone to see Secretariat that day and turns his phone off. Eventually, Todd is able to get a hold of him, and Mr. Peanut Butter is driven to the beach by the Cabracadabra whales, who help strain all of the spaghetti and save Pacific Ocean City, rendering Mr. Peanut Butter a public hero. Later that night, after celebrating the heroism and also Diane's new job at Girl Cruise, Mr. Peanut Butter's ex, Katrina, comes to the door and asks Mr. Peanut Butter if he'd like to run for governor. By October 2016, Mr. Peanut Butter's campaign is in full swing. They're attempting to garner enough signatures to recall Governor Woodchuck Kuchuk Berkowitz, which would trigger a special election potentially paving the way for PB to get elected. Unfortunately, PB does not get enough signatures for this, so instead he challenges Woodchuck to a ski race down Devil's Mountain. The winner would become the governor. Through November 2016, Mr. Peanut Butter continues to go on press tours, criticizing the governor for refusing his challenge, which Woodchuck claims is unconstitutional. Katrina garners political support 
support and ends up putting together an amendment that, among other things, makes the gubernatorial ski race perfectly legal. It also authorizes construction on a bridge to Hawaii. In early 2017, Woodchuck finally agrees to the ski race with Mr. Peanut Butter, who then reveals that he doesn't actually know how to ski, while Woodchuck is in fact very skilled. Mr. Peanut Butter briefly goes to ski school, which seemingly teaches him nothing about skiing. Mr. Peanut Butter tumbles his way down the entire gubernatorial ski race while Woodchuck easily makes it down the mountain. Unfortunately for him, Todd falls out of the sky on his drone throne, lands on a picnic bench that turns into a couple pieces of wood, and then crosses the finish line first on his impromptu skis, becoming governor of California. He immediately resigns, which triggers a special election, paving the way for Mr. Peanut Butter to properly run against Woodchuck. Later that year, Mr. Peanut Butter starts to lock in his positions as governor. Todd signs PB's name on a pro fracking letter, which cements PB be as a pro-fracking candidate, greatly frustrating Diane in the process. The major stress of the campaign soon starts to affect Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane's relationship, and specifically their sex life. Diane is still very upset that he's a pro-fracking candidate. Unfortunately for her, his numbers are actually up because of his stance, so he continues to double and triple down. This leads to Mr. Peanut Butter approving fracking in his own backyard, which is the last straw for Diane. She publishes anti-Mr. Peanut Butter articles with Girl Cruise, which leads to a huge argument and physical altercation between them. This is big fight number three. Don't you dare. Robert Blake gave me that mug. This fight, however, also manages to fix their sex life. Around October 2017, after a series of mass shootings, Diane writes an article for Girl Crush about what it's like handling a gun as a woman and the positive impact it has on her own feelings of safety. Mr. Peanut Butter, being a dog, hates guns, and the two of them have a public debate about guns on MSNBC. This seems to continue to aid their sex life as they have angry sex after each argument. Not long after this, Bojack shows up at Mr. Peanut Butter's house looking for Diane, who isn't there. He asks for PB's help to find his mother's baby doll, which he threw over the balcony, and PB sniffs it out for him. Shortly after this, Mr. Peanut Butter has a fundraiser at his house for his gubernatorial campaign. Tons of celebrities are there, including famous actor Zach Braff and Mr. Peanut Butter's ex, Jessica Biel. Shortly after after the fundraiser begins, an earthquake plunges the entire house deep underground, trapping the entire party. Diane is furious at PB over this development, and they get into big fight number four. Is this one of our sexy fights? No! Soon, Woodchuck Berkowitz tunnels into the house and assures them that somebody is coming to rescue them, but before long, the party devolves into chaos, and Mr. Peanut Butter and Woodchuck vie for power. Mr. Peanut Butter wins the popularity contest, and they decide to tie up Woodchuck, but soon, things devolve even further. Jessica Biel takes control and puts fire in charge of their little society. Not long after this, they eat Zach Braff. Fortunately, Princess Carolyn brokers a deal with the ant people who help raise the house out of the ground. After this, Mr. Peanut Butter drops out of the race and decides to endorse his former rival, Woodchuck Kuchuk Berkowitz. Woodchuck rejects his help and tells him to stay out of politics. Mr. Peanut Butter then starts up PB Living again with Todd, who pitches clown dentistry. Katrina starts to run a new campaign for Jessica Beale to run against Woodchuck, and Mr. Peanut Butter offers to help Woodchuck to prevent his ex-wife from becoming governor. Soon, Beale is rising in the polls and seems to pose a significant threat to Woodchuck. Fortunately, Diane goes to write an article article about Beale via interview, revealing that she hates avocados. This entirely sinks her campaign, leading to Woodchuck's re-election. In January 2018, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane are preparing to move into their new home after the underground incident. When they eventually arrive at the house, they decide instead they should take a quick vacation to Hawaii across the newly built bridge. The traffic is awful, and they eventually pull off to a rest stop and stay at a cheap motel there. While they're there, Diane tells Mr. Peanut Butter about how she always wanted a bell room, which is what she used to call Bell's Library in Beauty and the Beast. When the pair of them return home from their vacation, PB reveals that he had the bell room installed in their new house, which infuriates Diane, who has time and time again told him that she doesn't like grand gestures. They get in a major argument about this. This is big fight number five. I wanted to make our home feel like a place that you would want to live that could be yours as well as mine. Why is that so important to you? Because otherwise it feels like you're a guest. The two talk about their relationship further and Diane breaks down, saying she doesn't think she can do it anymore. Later that year, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane begin their separation. They remain friends and have dinners together. While eating at Elefante, a waitress named Pickles Aplenty starts to flirt with Mr. Peanut Butter. Diane suggests that PB have a housewarming party, which he decides is a great idea. Mr. Peanut Butter soon starts seeing Pickles and invites her to his housewarming party. In September 2018, Diane returns to LA from a trip to Vietnam, and Mr. Peanut Butter picks her up from the airport and drives her home. 
While in the car, they sign the papers to finalize their divorce, and Mr. Peanut Butter reveals that he is seeing someone romantically. Diane tells him that she's really happy for him. Mr. Peanut Butter continues to date Pickles, which has its ups and downs. Pickles becomes worried that the relationship is moving too quickly. The pair go on an evening date to watch the International Space Station blow up, which has all kinds of hang-ups. At dinner, Mr. Peanut Butter reveals that he still has feelings for Diane, and things quickly become awkward. But while watching the explosion, they share a nice moment together. I like you, and we have fun together. And every time we see each other, I like you a little more. They kiss as the space station explodes overhead. Soon after this, Mr. Peanut Butter hosts the red carpet for The Forgivies. While there, PB asks PC about an upcoming role in a film reboot. Princess Carolyn tells him he isn't tough enough, so Mr. Peanut Butter decides to toughen up his image. Todd takes him to the toughest bar in Hollywood, but instead of fighting tough guys, he accidentally helps them fix all of their various injuries and ailments. I'm gonna go home and make love to my wife! Mr. Peanut Butter decides he just isn't a tough guy. Fortunately, Mr. Peanut Butter still ends up being cast as Fritz on Bojack's new prestige drama series, Filbert. Shortly after Mr. Peanut Butter starts his work on Filbert, Bojack becomes jealous of the attention that he's getting. After Bojack's mother, Beatrice, dies, Mr. Peanut Butter offers his condolences. He starts talking about how his parents were sent to a farm and he hasn't seen them in years, which he quickly learns actually means that they are dead. He is devastated. On Halloween 2018, Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles go to Bojack's annual Halloween party together. While at the party, Bojack remarks about how many exes and girlfriends PB has brought to his party over the years, which makes Pickles feel very insecure. Mr. Peanut Butter starts to wonder what happened with all of his exes and why they all turned so bitter towards him. He tries to apologize to Pickles for talking about his exes and says they should leave. Instead, she runs off crying and locks herself in the bathroom. Mr. Peanut Butter then has a heart-to-heart -heart with Diane and laments that he seems to ruin amazing women as he dates them. Diane offers him some genuine advice about the people he dates and that he should stop dating people so young or choose to grow up himself. You keep dating women in their 20s. I do do that. After Diane has another heart-to-heart -heart with Pickles, Pickles leaves the bathroom and leaves for another party with Mr. Peanut Butter. Not long after this, Mr. Peanut Butter goes to see Princess Carolyn about optioning a greeting card for a movie called Birthday Dad. In early 2019, Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles attend the Filbert premiere together. While there, Pickles reveals that she really doesn't like the show and stopped watching the premiere after 10 minutes. This upsets Mr. Peanut Butter, and Pickles decides to go home to watch the entire season, even though she hates it. Mr. Peanut Butter then offers to take Diane home, who is distraught after a fight with Bojack and cannot find her parking ticket. When they arrive at Diane's, Mr. Peanut Butter goes inside with her, and they sleep together. Immediately after the premiere, Filbert is a massive success, and they start to shoot season two. While on set for season two, Mr. Peanut Butter mistakes Bojack's paranoia with his own paranoia, concerned that somebody knows about his affair with Diane. Someone is hiding something. How did you know? Did you talk to Diane? While in a drug field stupor on set, Bojack begins to genuinely choke Gina during a stunt choking scene. Mr. Peanut Butter helps to stop Bojack. Later in 2019, after this incident, Mr. Peanut Butter goes to talk to Diane about their affair. They discuss why he feels so bad about what happened, and Diane explains that he should feel guilt about it. They argue about it, and then have sex again. When they're done, Mr. Peanut Butter falsely believes this means that they're going to get back together, and says he's going to go tell Pickles. Diane explains to him that she does not want to get back together with him. We can't do this ever again. I'm sorry. Mr. Peanut Butter has dinner with Pickles at Elefante with the intention of telling her about his affair. However, instead, he panics and proposes. She accepts. Later in 2019, Birthday Dad is in full production being directed by Flea Daniels, but Mr. Peanut Butter's guilt about his affair with Diane is eating away at him. PB's guilt leads to ridiculous demands of re-editing, and Daniels decides to pull the plug on the entire film. Pickles can tell that Mr. Peanut Butter is feeling ashamed of something, but Mr. Peanut Butter lies to her that the only thing he's worried about is his friend Bojack, who is now in rehab. Not long after this, Mr. Peanut Butter actually goes to visit Bojack in rehab, but instead of helping Bojack, he uses it as his own therapy to work through his guilt about Pickles and Diane. Bojack actually gives Mr. Peanut Butter some great advice about how bottled up guilt can seep out and negatively affect people in other ways. You convince yourself that you're being selfless, but it comes out in other ways and it infects everything. Later, Mr. Peanut Butter and PC decide to pitch Birthday Dad as a TV series instead of a movie, which is greenlit. A bit later in 2019, Todd decides to have a surprise wedding for Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles at Mr. Peanut Butter's house and invites everyone. Unfortunately, right as they're about to jump out and surprise them, Mr. Peanut Butter confesses that he cheated on Pickles with Diane, leading to the entire party attempting to stay hidden from the couple as they fight. Mr. Peanut Butter tries his best to apologize, but Pickles is very understandably upset. This leads to all kinds of arguments about their families and also some guy named Greg from a gas station. Why are you bringing him up? 
I don't know, but he sucks too. After a series of starts and stops in the discussion, some involving Boba T, Mr. Peanut Butter asks Pickles if she still wants to marry him. She says as long as it only happened once, they can put it behind them. Mr. Peanut Butter then confesses that he actually slept with Diane twice. Pickles retreats to the backyard, still upset. While hiding, Bojack and Diane give Mr. Peanut Butter advice disguised as a coin sorter and thermostat, which really helps Mr. Peanut Butter when he approaches Pickles shortly after. He listens to her concerns and lets her speak. The two decide that their relationship can continue if Pickles is allowed to sleep with someone as revenge. This goes on for a while as she continues to try and sleep with someone who she has a real connection with, as to make sure it's an even trade considering Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane's prior relationship. Soon, the word about Mr. Peanut Butter's infidelity becomes public, which causes his co-stars and crew on Birthday Dad to treat him with disgust and anger. This leads to a photo of Mr. Peanut Butter being incredibly sad on a park bench, being turned into a meme known as Sad Dog. While on the set of Birthday Dad, Mr. Peanut Butter is almost hit by a slow-moving car driven by pop star Joey Pogo, and Princess Carolyn spins this into PB living up to his sad dog meme. Joey Pogo then ropes Mr. Peanut Butter into becoming the face of a major campaign, bringing light to the realities of depression, as the event is spun into a failed suicide attempt. While on his tour as the face of depression in late 2019, Mr. Peanut Butter runs into Bojack in Washington, D.C. Bojack is now out of rehab and on his way to Wesleyan University to become their new drama teacher. Mr. Peanut Butter brings Bojack to a TV history museum and shows him his old sweater from Horsin' Around. Also at the museum is the entire kitchen set from Mr. Peanut Butter's house. Bojack finally indulges Mr. Peanut Butter, and the pair of them play out their crossover episode on the set. Mr. Peanut Butter weeps with joy. Later, Mr. Peanut Butter talks to Pickles on the phone, who expresses to him that she keeps sleeping with other guys, but none of them are making her feel any better. She wants to cheat on Mr. Peanut Butter with someone like Mr. Peanut Butter. This gives PB the idea that Joey Pogo might be the right person. In early 2020, Joey and Mr. Peanut Butter soon go into business together as co-owners of Elefante. They rename the restaurant Elefino. Soon after this, two reporters named Max and Paige speak to Mr. Peanut Butter about Bojack Horseman. This is interrupted by an argument between Pickles and Joey. Pickles starts to get frustrated working with Joey Pogo at the restaurant and expresses to PB that she doesn't want to work with him anymore. Mr. Peanut Butter continues talking to Paige and Max about when Bojack and Sarah Lynn broke into his house shortly before Sarah Lynn's death. Pickles and Joey then decide that they're going to sleep together to complete the cheating saga. But after they do so, they realize that they really might have feelings for one another. He also expresses that he needs a social media manager who understands his brand, which perfectly describes Pickles. Pickles then tells Mr. Peanut Butter that she's going to go on tour with Joey to take the job opportunity. She gives him one last hug and kiss and leaves. Shortly after this, the pair of them break up. Mr. Peanut Butter starts to get very lonely after Pickles stops living with him, but luckily for him, Bojack loses his house and income after his disastrous TV interviews and comes to PB looking for a place to live. Mr. Peanut Butter tells him he can live there forever. Mr. Peanut Butter also helps get Bojack some work on Birthday Dad as an extra. On that same day, Mr. Peanut Butter attends Todd's housewarming party where he brings Pickles' favorite alcoholic energy drink, which he claims he won't need anymore. Around this time, Mr. Peanut Butter writes a memoir called Rad Dog, My Journey from Sad Dog to Birth Dad Dog, which he claims was very easy to write, and he wrote in a single weekend. After its release, Diane calls Mr. Peanut Butter from Chicago, and the two catch up. Mr. Peanut Butter talks to her about how he's learning to be on his own after being in relationship after relationship year after year. They have a really nice conversation and get some closure on their own relationship. If we hadn't met each other until now, we wouldn't be the people we are now. Yeah. Not long after this, Bojack is sent to prison for breaking and entering into his old house. In 2021, he's released on a day pass to attend Princess Carolyn's wedding, and Mr. Peanut Butter picks him up from prison. The pair of them catch up over food and discuss the things Bojack has missed. Mr. Peanut Butter asks Bojack about his post-prison plans, and he says that the only thing he's worried about is not messing up while he's out for the wedding. On the way to the wedding, Mr. Peanut Butter also reveals that he's remained single since he dated Pickles and is continuing to work on himself. Before heading to their final destination, Mr. Peanut Butter stops at the Griffith Park Observatory for a press conference. PB has arranged for the Hollywood D to return to the hillside sign after his Hollywood heist removed it so many years earlier. It's revealed that they messed up and replaced it with a B, unveiling Hollywood for the first time. When they get back in the car, Mr. Peanut Butter reassures Bojack that everything will be fine at the wedding. And that is the end of the complete Mr. Peanut Butter timeline. Mr. Peanut Butter is such a fun character. His arc might be one that could have used a tad more development on the back end, but he still represents so many interesting aspects of life, Hollywood, and relationships. He's a character who for so long is so blissfully unaware of his own shortcomings, but by the end, he truly comes to grips with the things he needs to change about himself. 
I wish we had maybe gotten to see a bit more about those things play out, but regardless, I love Mr. Peanut Butter, the king of crossovers. Folks, thanks for tuning in to another massive BoJack timeline. If you like this one, make sure to check out the other five I've released so far, and of course, stay tuned for more. Peace. Johnny! Two